section eight of journal of the reverend francis asbury volume one this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by kathleen journal of the reverend francis asbury volume one section eight lord's day eighteen my soul has enjoyed great peace this week in which i have rode near one hundred miles since my departure from philadelphia and have preached often and sometimes great solemnity has rested on the congregation on monday brother y rode in company with me to mr s s where i preached with sweet freedom to a few attentive people we took friendly counsel together and our time was profitably and comfortably spent on tuesday morning my heart was still with the lord and my peace flowed as a river glory be given to god on wednesday at newcastle the company was but small though great power attended the word perhaps the lord will yet visit this people though at present too many of them appear to be devoted to pride vanity and folly but through abundant mercy my heart is devoted to god and to his work oh that it may never depart from him i received a letter from my dear brother w written in ireland with his usual plainness and honesty of heart thursday i came to our teas when the lord enabled me to press home the word on the consciences of the people many of whom had never heard us before set off the next day for susquehanna and met with i r who gave me an account of considerable prospect of the work of god in kent in the evening we came very wet and weary to i d s we were kindly entertained and soon forgot our fatigue and pains lord's day twenty five i first preached in this neighbourhood and then rode hard to reach deer creek in time was very unwell with a violent headache but after preaching to many people and meeting a large class i felt myself much recovered thus the lord graciously helpeth me my soul is filled with peace and drawn out in love to god and man monday twenty six my heart is fixed trusting in the lord and fully bent through grace to obey his holy will how sweet is the peace and how great is the power with which the lord blesseth me part of the forenoon was spent in settling the class then brother w rode with me to s l s where i met two more classes and found them in a prosperous way then rode back to h w s in great peace and the next day i found the class increased in number at s f s preached also in the evening and found it a comfortable time the young women in the house seemed determined to see the salvation of their souls wednesday twenty eight r w set off with me for his house but before we rode far a violent clap of thunder which appeared to be just over my head shook every limb in my body and frightened my horse so much that i found it difficult to keep my saddle but my body and mind soon recovered the shock and my soul was comforted thus we see dangers stand thick through all the ground to push us to the tomb but the lord is the preserver of all that put their trust in him glory be given to god for ever thursday twenty nine met the class at j p s in gunpowder neck and found the enemy had attempted to get in amongst them but through their vigilance and the grace of god he was repelled and could gain no admittance on thursday i intended to go to baltimore but was prevented by a lameness in one of my feet so my time was spent at j p s the lord hath done great things for the people in this neighbourhood many of them are very happy in religion and so thirsting for full salvation on saturday j k met me i attempted to speak a little in public but was afterward very unwell and had a troublesome pain in my head however i was enabled to preach the next day with some clergy monday august two we began our quarterly meeting after our temporal business was done i read a part of our minutes to see if brother s would conform 
but he appeared to be inflexible he would not administer the ordinances under our direction at all many things were said on the subject and a few of the people took part with him at the conclusion of our quarterly meeting on tuesday we had a comfortable season and many were refreshed especially in the love feast on wednesday i set out for baltimore but was taken very sick on the road however i pursued my way though it was sometimes through hard rain and heavy thunder and preached in baltimore on thursday in mrs tribulet's new house which she freely lent for that purpose there appeared to be a considerable moving under the word after preaching the next morning at the point i went to see a woman once happy in several respects but now under distressing circumstances her husband was driven from her and she was left with four children for three months many people in general attend the preaching in baltimore especially after we have been long enough in town for the inhabitants to receive full knowledge of our being there and i have a great hope that the lord will do something for the souls in this place though the little society has been rather neglected for want of proper persons to lead them i rode to patapsco neck and after preaching reduced the class to some order nathan perig told me he had been grieved by some who had manifested too great a forwardness to speak in public i then returned to baltimore and went thence to black river neck where i found contention in the class but through grace was enabled to bring them to peace and order then i went to charles harriman's and settled two classes in that neighborhood while preaching there the lord favored us with a lively and profitable season my mind has lately been much tortured with temptations but the lord has stood by and delivered me oh my god when will my trials end at death lord be ever with me and save me or my soul must perish at last but my trust is still in god that he will ever help me to conquer all my foes preached and met the society on wednesday at joseph Presbury's, and on thursday set off for kent county but was troubled with a very uncommon pain in my head in public worship at mr g s a serious negro was powerfully struck and though he made but little noise yet he trembled so exceedingly that the very house shook i then rode to mr h and was kindly entertained here we saw a little woman with neither hands nor feet yet she could walk card spin sew and knit and her heart rejoiced in god her saviour but what is she at this time friday thirteen the spirit of holy peace reigns in my heart glory be given to god i received information to-day of w f who had threatened to stone one of our preachers but was taken sick and died in a few days also of another person who had been under conviction for sin but resisting and shaking it off he left the house and died in the dark speaking evil of the ways of god likewise of mrs h who was under conviction from the spirit of god but going from the house and indulging a trifling spirit she soon after died thus it seems when men slight the mercies of god he visits them with his judgments the congregation to-day at mr g was very large but they looked like fat bulls of bashan though they sat pretty still while i endeavoured to prove that the spirit doctrine sufferings and practice of the holy apostles are exemplified in the people of god at this time the lord favoured me with freedom and power as also in the evening at mr h on saturday a multitude of people attended the preaching of the word and the lord was with us of a truth lord's day fifteen for some time past the lord has blessed me with abundant peace and love but my soul longs for all the fullness of god as far as it is attainable by man oh when shall it once be when shall my soul be absorbed in purity and love the congregation assembled under a tree at mr g and in the time of the first prayer 
a woman fell down and lay there all the time of the sermon the people here appear to be much affected with prejudice against i r they will not bear with his rough address but i know not what to do with them if some other preacher could visit them in his stead perhaps the work of god would prosper much better but most of the society appear to be under a genuine work of grace though a few of their cases are doubtful the clerk of the church desired to be present in the class meeting and was considerably affected tuesday seventeen after preaching to a number of people at mr h i was much delighted with the simple account of the work of god related and experienced by t l who i believe is saved from indwelling sin he was born at thornsbury near bristol in england and came over to america about nineteen or twenty years ago he was first brought to god in gunpowder neck and was soon after in great distress for purity of heart he said he prayed and wept till his tears lay in small lakes on the floor but was at last suddenly filled with spiritual glory he was blessed with wonderful communications of peace and love he appeared to be a holy serious happy man and artless without colouring so that there is no room to doubt but it is a genuine work of god wednesday eighteen several friends both men and women accompanied me to the bay and when we came to the waterside we kneeled down and prayed recommending each other to the grace of god thursday nineteen i felt myself unwell but my heart longs to overflow with love to god my resolution is through grace to make a total and perpetual surrender of myself to him and his service at d r on friday many people attended to hear the word which was dispensed with some power but my soul longs and pants for more of god my heart rejoices in god but i am troubled with too much freedom of temper which may proceed from a great flow of animal spirits but it has the appearance of levity i long to be so guarded as to have a solemn constant sense of the omnipresent god resting on my mind saturday twenty one f h invited me home with him and i called to see r d but found him too wise for me to do him much good rode to h w and preached with life and power from the first psalm and afterward met the class preached on the lord's day at h w in the morning at five at s l at ten and at s f in the evening my soul has been kept in tranquillity and peace tuesday twenty four my heart swells with strong desire to live to god and to trust constantly in him that he may direct my paths i i an honest old friend came to hear me oh that names and parties were done away that christians were all but one body that pure love might reign alone in every heart lord hasten the happy and desirable period wednesday twenty five my body was very weak but my soul was strengthened and blessed with a delightful sense of god while preaching to a large congregation at mr b and i afterward met the class god is the portion of my soul and to do his will is my constant desire and determination i spoke with two exhorters at mr c and gave them license to act in that character friday twenty seven at mr c we had a comfortable time and the work of god seems to be reviving there satan is still haunting my mind but the lord gives me power to resist him and keeps me in constant peace on saturday all my soul was love no desire for anything but god had place in my heart keep me o lord in this delightful blessed frame this day i met with p e who has set out to preach but i am doubtful of his call d r who lodged with me to-night is under great exercises of mind from a conviction that it is his duty to preach he ventured to open his mind to me on the subject after he was in bed and so exceedingly was he agitated that the bed shook under him while he was relating the exercises of his mind lord's day 
after preaching at mr o's in the morning and at mr e's in the afternoon i rode thence to town under heavy exercises of mind surely there will be good done here or the place must be given up on monday i spent part of my time in reading poole's account of the downfall of antichrist lord hasten the time while preaching this evening in town there was a gracious moving amongst the people on tuesday i rode to mr d s where a few attended and i trust not in vain then returned to town groaning in spirit i was in company with brother w and brother s on wednesday but was much distressed on account of so few preachers well qualified for the work and so many who are forward to preach without due qualifications my foolish mind felt rather disposed to murmuring pride and discontent lord pardon me and grant me more grace the next day my conscience checked me for the appearance of levity how seriously should we consider the presence of the deity and ever remember that we must render an account of all our conduct friday september three after enjoying a comfortable season with a few friends at mr h s about twelve miles from baltimore i preached at four o'clock at mr a s in middle river neck where there is a good prospect and lodged with m a whose heart the lord hath touched and on saturday returned to town lord's day five in the morning i preached at town and then at the point where the people seemed more attentive and afterward returned to town and preached at night to a large congregation it is a matter of great grief to me to see the inhabitants of this town so much devoted to pride spiritual idolatry and almost every species of sin lord visit them yet in tender mercy to reform and save their souls on monday i went to visit w l in patapsco neck how is the scene changed there he is no more ashamed of the truth as it is in jesus his wife has lately experienced great agonies of soul and was in a wonderful manner delivered being filled with the peace and love of god this by the mercy of god has produced a gracious effect on his heart the next day he accompanied me to g p s and thence to gunpowder neck where we had a comfortable time hitherto the lord hath helped wednesday eight i crossed bush river and then rode to i d my heart was filled with peace and power but what sore conflicts have attended me i am weary of all that is wrong within me lord purify my heart make me wholly thine and fill me with all the fullness of thy love the next day i visited f h who treated me kindly we entered into a close conversation on religious subjects but i found he had been reading mr m mystery of errors more than the gospel he has some good qualities but how weighty is his charge he has a family of not less than eighty souls under his care they were collected in the evening to join in prayer and receive a word of exhortation i rode to deer creek on friday and had a refreshing season as also at henry waters in the evening at four o'clock the lord is still my friend and fills me with peace and pure desire monday thirteen found it necessary on a particular occasion to go to pipe creek and while preaching to a large number of people at richard o wings the power of the lord was present my mind has been much stayed on god for some time past and my body has felt but little weariness though on some days i have preached four times came to william lynch's and found mr l in spiritual trouble but i hope the lord will soon deliver him and give him the oil of joy for mourning glory to god my mind is kept in sweet peace and deeply engaged in every duty preached on thursday at mr l's and there appeared to be some small awakenings amongst the people thence rode to nathan Barrigs. he appears to be a man that fears god in some degree but is very stiff and in some things full of self-will my mind was as it were in chains while preaching at mr h s 
but my soul was greatly blessed while dispensing the word to a large congregation at mr a s in middle river neck there is a prospect of some good being done by the grace of god in this place after preaching on saturday with freedom and satisfaction to a number of people in gunpowder neck i was taken very unwell and after a very restless night with much profuse sweating i rose in the morning exceedingly indisposed and in much weakness of body went through the public duties of the day but the lord was graciously and powerfully with me both in preaching and society meeting monday twenty my soul was refreshed with the love of god how do i long for a mind thoroughly refined filled with perfect purity and constantly devoted to god the prospect and hope of this frequently transports my soul lord hasten the blessed period let all my soul be swallowed up in love i have lately been reading mr w on the ruin and recovery of man he is a judicious writer in the main and generally illustrates his subjects well but some of his sentiments relative to infants i think are very exceptionable tuesday twenty one i crossed the bay in company with a few friends to kent county after a good passage we reached the shore sat down to rest and refresh ourselves and then joined in prayer we walked to john randall's where we were informed of the opposition which one of our preachers met with but the work is the lord's and they that oppose his work oppose his omnipotence on tuesday my soul was kept in peace and rest after preaching with some comfort i was seized with a quartan ague which was attended with much pain in my back and limbs mr kennard asked me home and treated me with much civility and kindness i now read smollett's description of the methodists and cannot wonder that his readers who have no personal knowledge of them should treat the methodists with contempt but the day is coming when every one will appear in his true colours and be constrained to render an account of all his conduct to god a high fever and heavy sweats were my companions in the night and the next morning i was too unwell to speak in prayer but i ventured to ride in a carriage as far as mr henson's in the afternoon thursday twenty three at mr henson's the lord was with me while preaching from acts fourteen ten observing in j r the odious appearance of speaking too freely of absent persons i felt a sense of my own imprudence and saw both the propriety and necessity of retaining every such matter in my own breast till an opportunity may offer of conversing with the person immediately concerned face to face lord pardon me in everything that is wrong in the least degree and grant me more fortitude and evangelical wisdom for the time to come friday twenty four my trials and exercises have been somewhat peculiar may the god of mercy communicate more abundant power and love though this was the day in course for my ague to return i preached to a small serious congregation with inward power my ague came on afterward with a severe pain in my back i drove off the cold fit by walking and running but went to bed in a high fever the next morning my frame felt weak but my heart was sweetly resigned saturday twenty five while preaching to a large company at mr gibbs we had a moving melting time after preaching at nine o'clock the next morning at the same place i went to church and thought the minister intended to point at me by speaking against idleness and people who follow an unwarrantable employment and doing what they have no business with but can any employment be more unwarrantable than the charge of souls without any real concern for their salvation and bad as idleness is it is far preferable to leading immortal souls astray the world can judge whether he is most like an idle man who reads a dry harangue every lord's day or he who toils and labours both day and night to save the souls of men but these things i leave with the lord 
many people attended my preaching in the evening while i took occasion from second corinthians five twenty to show amongst other things the evangelical mission and life of a true ambassador of christ monday we crossed the bay and rode to joseph presbury's my ago coming on i went to bed in great torture and thought my frame could not long endure it my body is greatly weakened by this disorder and perhaps i shall be dumb for a season either for my own unfaithfulness or the unfaithfulness of the people may the lord fortify my soul with patience thursday thirty though very weak and low the lord favored me with a good opportunity life and liberty at daniel ruff's friday october one i was exceedingly ill at mr d s and now began to think my travelling would be interrupted this is my greatest trouble and pain to forsake the work of god and to neglect the people whose spiritual interest and salvation i seek with my whole soul the next day finding myself too weak to travel i sent brother e in my place and must content myself to abide here a while where they treat me with the greatest care and kindness my present purpose is if the lord spares and raises me up to be more watchful and circumspect in all my ways o lord remember me in mercy and brace up my feeble soul End of section eight.